I ran out the door and I kept thinking I'll go home and it'll be fine. That's, you know, this, it's surreal. And, and our lives are good, aren't they? And so I got down the corridor in, in, in the hospital and I remember this, a policeman coming towards me and he's holding his arms out like this and he, he grabs me and he's hugging me and he's crying. And I was crying and sobbing and screaming at him. And he said, we're going to get them. Because mm. he's angry now. And I, then I started, it came up out of my mouth and I said, no, you're not, because you really don't care. Nobody cares. And I started to get really angry with this and shouting and screaming at him. And he's, all the time he's pulling me back to this room and he said, um, in a minute, they'll come and get you. Mm. And you've got to identify him. Not we'd like you to, but you've got to. And everything in your heart and didn't soul want to do it. Well, really yeah, doesn't Rain, want to do you this. Didn't, you didn't want to go in. No. No. I couldn't take it. And what we did, we both held each other's hand and took each other. You know, we were stopping and going, stopping and going. And outside the room were two policemen and a doctor. I said, can we donate his organs? Christopher carried an organ donor card. He was a motorbike rider for a, dom uh, for a pizza company. Mm. And uh, the policeman said, no. He said, I don't know how to tell you this. You can't touch Chris. You can't hold him. Mm. Christopher, you know, is, I found that yesterday is the same. Christopher became what is known as the property of a coroner. But in Britain, we call him a crime scene. Mm. He's not a crime scene, he's my son. I remember we went in the room, Christopher's lying there. He's wrapped up like a mummy. There's still a bit of blood in his face. This side of his face was completely gone. Mm. They smashed his face in. And I just, I lost it. I lost my temper, to be honest. I said to the police, if I can't kiss him on the forehead, that's the last thing he did to me when he left home. I'll dick him. Sorry, this is why I speak in London. I'll, I'll knock you out. Mm. They had a talk and they said, you can kiss him, but keep your hands behind your back. I couldn't touch my son. You couldn't touch him, could you? No. They told you that you couldn't bury your son for 16 weeks. Yes. They had to, they had to work, yeah, 16 weeks. They had to work out, was it a kick in or the car that killed him? and they had to remove his brain. And this, there's a special scarring comes, and that's, that takes 16 weeks, mm -hmm. and we couldn't bury him. Do you know what I said to the coroner when she said that to me? I said, that's not my son in there. Mm -hmm. My son's in heaven. You do what you want, because he gave his life to Jesus at 15. Mm -hmm. That's the peace we had, wasn't it? That was the only peace we had out of all of this. Ray, you decided to do something that I don't know if, every parent could do. You decide before they even found the killers of your son yeah. to forgive them. I just knew we had to do it. Mm. Because I'd done revenge in my old days and it doesn't work, it's not sweet. And I had to go this new way and you couldn't get it, could you? I didn't want to get it. Mm. I'm riding on the anger and I, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. It's, it's been disloyal to Chris, isn't it? It's not right, you can't say that and God can't ask us to do this, mm. I said. It took me about a year yeah. to get my head around even thinking about it. I remember there was a guy in our church. He comes up to me after church and he's grinning at me. And when he grins at you, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> and he's <laughs> grinning like a Cheshire cat. And he says to me, why, Jesus loves the boys who killed your mm. son. Oh, how dare you say that to me? And he said, no, but you see, when you get it, he came for the whole world. Mm. He loves everyone. When they come to him, and they will, mm. he will forgive them. What are you going to do? And I went home and said, who is he you think he is? <laughs> but you see, the Bible says the truth will set you free. He wouldn't go away. It's like a song in my head now. Yeah. And I had to think about that. I can't sit on the fence. I can either choose God's way mm. or I can choose man's way. And I, I, I could see that it was a better way to go with God. I could see that. And, and then in the courtroom, Ray said to me, Vi, everybody loses. Look at their parents. Mm -hmm. Everyone we've, we've loses. All lost. Mm -hmm. And then I started to get a bit of compassion coming back in and I started to really, and I'm gonna do this, but I didn't know how. Yeah. God, you've got to tell me how. And then I realized it's a choice. Mm. That's how. It's not about how you feel, because if it's about how you feel, me and Ray, well, we go to his grave and we get angry, and that's the truth. Christmas is coming. Yeah. He's not there. Yeah. yeah. 
birthdays. All of those things are going to happen. But we've got this wonderful God that says you've got a choice. Mm. You can choose it above everything you feel. And then I got it. I got the clue to it. Mm. Wow. So I can choose it, and I can choose it every minute of every day. Mm. Not, not a one-off, because that's yes. never going to work. So it's one thing, Ray, to say, okay, I forgive them. I'm going to go my way. They're going to go theirs. But you want to meet the men yeah. that killed I wanted, your son. I wanted the answers. I wanted truth. Because in court, all we got were lies. Mm. In court, when he was found guilty, he shouted, I'm innocent. I didn't do nothing. Mm. That was what he shouted. Mm -hmm. Mm. In the room, after, it was a four-hour meeting. Mm. He said, I was a 15-year-old coward. I murdered your son, I'm sorry. That's all we wanted. Mm. So That's when we looked we at him and we said, we forgive you, young mm. man. Move on and have the life Chris can't have. I don't know who got healed more. Mm. He, the reaction of him, he took like a, a, an imaginary sack off his shoulder and put it on the floor and he just went, huh. And the second boy, we <laughs> met him six months later. Yeah. He came out of prison. It was me who said I want to meet him out of prison in case people think they're only meeting us to get out early. Right. You don't get out early for doing right. this. And it's a big long room. And as, he, as I saw him turn the corner coming, I stopped went like that. And we broke, broke every risk assessment going. He ran into the room. He didn't walk. He ran up to me, grabbed me so tight mm. I couldn't breathe. And he kept crying on my shoulder. He sobbed. Mm. And he kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Every time he break, he grabbed me again. Didn't even know what to buy. Squeeze every bit of life out of her, didn't he? please just sit down and <laughs> I mean it's so overwhelming that everyone in the room's crying the facilitators you know and the probation officers they're all crying because it shouldn't have happened he wanted to meet us years ago and people wouldn't let us mm -hmm. it took us nearly 11 years to meet him because mm. people kept getting in our way wouldn't let us do it all we ever wanted was the truth yeah. and we're, all they ever did was tell lies in the court to try and save their lives and the third young boy, young man, yeah. was a little more hesitant and came with his dad. Yeah, in the room, the chairs were all in a big circle. The only people that speak to me and via the facilitators and the, and the boy. Mm. And he went, can I ask a question? We went, yeah. Can we bring the chairs closer, please? Mm. He felt so comfortable in our presence, yeah. didn't he? Mm. That he yeah. brought, we all moved the chairs closer. He didn't closer. feel ashamed anymore. Yeah. Yeah. He felt that he got some healing out of this restorative practice. <sighs> I mean. Restorative practice changed our lives again. Yeah. It won't bring Chris back. In fact, in, the, in the meeting, I asked all three. I said, don't know to us to apologise, you should apologise to Chris. Mm -hmm. And Stephen, do you only with a bottle? Mm -hmm. Well, the guts are just over here, to come to Christopher's grave. Mm -hmm. It was a horrible winter's day, it was pouring with rain. Mm -hmm. I showed them where Christopher's grave was, and the horrible thing is, when you walk to Christopher's grave, You've got 87, 96, 84, 75. Everybody in that line has had a, a life. You get to his little grave, he's 18. Mm. He walked down with his probation officer with some garage flowers, which all he could afford. Mm. We saw him get on his knees in the mud. Mm. And I looked up and said, God, you're asking too much of me today. Mm. We went for a walk. Came back 20 minutes later, he's still on his knees in the mud. I said, get up, Stevie, get up. I look, Christopher's here, we're here. Mm. Christopher had this attitude, I'm going to say, Politely you now, because we're on Christian television. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poo happens, mm. get over it. Mm. That was his life. Mm. And I said, if my son was alive today, he would tell you to move on. That's the kind of kid he was. So we're giving you permission to move on yeah. today. More tears. And he went, can I come back? Mm. We knew he wanted to bring his wife and child back, yeah? Said, of course you can. Oh no, he said, what is someone here? I don't want to offend no one. See how he's thinking now. Mm -hmm. I said, Steve, no one knows you from Adam. If anybody asks who you are, save his friend. We can't change the past, we can all move into, into the future. Mm. He wrote a letter that we can make public, and in the first letter he put, my name's Stephen Andrews, I along with other companies was involved in the death of Christopher on the 26th of May 2001. He's making that public to the world. Yeah. And way down in, its, in one of the paragraphs he put, when Ray and Vi forgive me, it made me feel like a human again. Oh. We thought of them as monsters, didn't we? Do you we? remember what we said? Monsters. I had no idea this is what he was thinking mm. of himself. You see? And then I saw the human being in the mm -hmm. room. He's not a monster. You've now dedicated 15 years of your lives to restorative justice. You've gone to countless prisons. You're visiting even a prison here in yeah. Canada yeah. while you're here. This is something you passionately believe in, sharing Chris's story. Yeah. Yeah 
And the redeeming part of Chris's story is that there is forgiveness. Yeah. Absolutely.